Morning. Welcome. I'm just here to talk about our curriculum. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of a sense of who we have teaching here and what it is that they teach. Over the course of your first year, you'll take three courses that collectively comprise what we describe as private law. That is, the law governing relationships between private individuals. So for example, one body of private law is contracts. If you enter into a voluntary agreement with something else, that they're going to do something for you and maybe you're going to pay them, that is a contract. Second body of private law is what we call tort law, which is the law of non-voluntary relationships. When someone hits you with their car, that is not something that you agreed to or consented to, but they have formed a legal relationship with you where you have the right to sue them for injuring you. So the world of torts defines those situations in which people have obligations to each other whether or not they've entered into a voluntary agreement. Third regime or body of so-called private law is property, which is different from both contracts and torts because it defines ownership interests in stuff and those interests aren't uh, governed by the same kinds of relationships that you see in contracts or torts because if you own something, say a house, that doesn't just create a set of relationships between you and specified people, that creates rights that you have against the entire world. And property has the feature, also different from contracts and torts, of existing over generations. So over the course of your first year, you'll be taking torts in the first semester, uh, property and contract law in the second semester. Those are important both because they're fundamental to other things that you'll be exploring later, whether it's corporate law, whether it's environmental law, or what have you. Also because there are certain intersections between those things and you can get a sense of how those three so-called pillars of private law interact and intersect. Then you'll be taking a couple of courses about what we call public law. Law governing not the relationships between private individuals, but law governing relationships between individuals and the state or the government. So there, there's really two major courses. One is criminal law and constitutional law, which is more of a happy story about rights that you have against the government. So criminal law is about things that you are not permitted to do as a citizen. Constitutional law is about uh, the limitations of governmental power over you and about how the government constitutes itself. The final course you take in your first year is a course on procedure, which is basically about the rules of the legal game. Then as you move on to your upper class curriculum, you can choose whatever it is that you want to do. And it is our goal to provide a curriculum that is rich and robust enough to enable you to do whatever it is that you want to do. To give you a sense of the breadth, we have a number of certificate programs that basically allow you to focus on a particular area of law if that is your choice. You don't need to. You can take a smattering of courses from different fields and that's actually a good idea for many people. But if you know exactly what it is that you want to do, we've tried to structure particular courses of study so that you can gain sustained and uh, continued expertise in those fields. So the five areas that we have certificate programs in are business law, criminal law, IP and entertainment and media law, that's all one thing, but it sort of has a couple of different moving parts. International law and real estate law. Uh, those are the fields in which we award certificates. We have certain centers that are dedicated to particular areas of law. So we have the Block Center for International Business Law that reflects an area of traditional faculty strength. We have a center for business law and regulation which reflects the fact that we are located uh, about a mile and a half as the crow flies from Wall Street. We have a couple of other centers uh, dedicated to health and science, uh, law, language, and cognition. One thing that we're looking to build in the future that might not be obvious on our website uh, is uh, to strengthen our program to support entrepreneurship. So if you do not live in Brooklyn, you may not know that Brooklyn is sort of Silicon Valley East in terms of all of the businesses that are cropping up all over the place. But all of those people who are starting their own businesses need legal support, right? All of those startup businesses could use lawyers to help them avoid certain mistakes that will prevent them from thriving and flourishing the way that they can.